We're in Glenshaw. We are in what was the garage of Glenshaw Glass Company, which is still making glass. And correct me if I'm wrong, but this is a vodka distillery. This is now a vodka distillery. This is Pennsylvania's first vodka distillery. It came from an idea of much earlier, late 90s, when all these brew pubs were starting up, and I just couldn't figure out why a restaurant wasn't making its own vodka or its own gin. Nobody was making handcrafted vodka at that time. I've never been a beer drinker, really. Always liked vodka, and uh, so I looked into it. But your end of it, obviously, is premium. You want to get as pure as you can be. Absolutely. The ideal of vodka is to make something that has no smell, has very little taste, um, and goes down very smoothly. But uh, one always wants to have a little characteristic to one's vodka, or you know, you'd just be drinking sort of alcoholic water. In our case, we always insisted from the word go we'd use potatoes. Potatoes, if they're distilled properly, have a nice sweetness to them at the beginning, and they have an incredibly good smooth finish as well as they have sort of mouthfeel to them. Uh, people who drink wine know the idea of mouthfeel. What's in here? Uh, that is uh, 1,200 pounds of potatoes. So these aren't real potatoes. These aren't like potatoes we see on our plate. <laughs> right, they're dehydrated. So they've already, the water's been removed. Uh, they're in a small flake form. And how often do you get potatoes? About every six weeks. They're only Pennsylvania potatoes. Um, they, the, the majority of them are grown sort of near the Harrisburg area, but they are in fact collected from co-ops across the state. So Blair County and Cambria County ha grow a lot of potatoes. And what's interesting in our side of the state, most of the potatoes that are grown here are really grown only for Snyder's or Berlin potato chips. What would the other options be if you weren't using potatoes? Well, most vodkas are made from wheat. Uh, in fact, the predominance of vodka is made from corn. That's what you see on your bottom shelf. From the bottom shelf on up, it's pretty much wheat. Wheat is, uh, is, is a lot cheaper than potatoes, a lot easier to handle, a lot easier to convert into an alcohol. Potatoes are difficult, uh, but that was the challenge. This is, as advertised, a hand-crafted vodka. Explain exactly what that means. We're one of the few distilleries that actually starts from scratch. That means we use a real potato to make a real vodka. Um, and we can control every step of the process. And we do everything by a batch. We start with two mashes of potatoes, and then that ends up to be um, a little over 200 cases. Handwriting our, our batch number on every bottle. Barry, the still master, signs every bottle as well. Uh, each bottle gets dipped in wax, uh, gets sealed, gets cartoned. Uh, there's no machinery here to do any of it. We do it all by hand. So. How do you do this? How do you make a potato vodka? Well, we start with our uh, Pennsylvania potatoes. First thing I do is we add hot water to our mash tank. So we have about 3,000 liters of hot water. We add the potatoes to get to like a really runny mashed potato kind of consistency. And then we add enzymes to break down the starch to sugar. And when it gets to a certain temperature, we pitch the yeast in, mix it well, and then we place it in the fermentation tank for three to five days. It will ferment to about 10% alcohol, then we start distilling. So this is, in effect, a big tub of partially distilled vodka? Yeah, this is the first distillation called the stripping run. And how many distillations does it go through before it's the final product? Uh, three, so it's triple distilled. I think my favorite piece of equipment is, is this guy right oh, here. Yeah. So that's the rectification column. So the final two distillations occur on that. So the alcohol is the one that gets further up, right. like the water. Right, and the water, you can see through the uh, windows, will start dripping down. Huh. It's like you actually had to add a little roof to make room for this guy. That was one of our criteria to find a location was a place that the column would either fit in or we could cut the roof. Boyd and Blair are names of our ancestors. Uh, Blair is my great-grandfather. Boyd uh, is Barry's uh, late father-in-law, a guy also who worked really hard but also knew how to have fun. And uh, so we just sort of put the alliteration together, Boyd and Blair. Why did you guys start this? I think we both wanted to have something that was you know, our own, that was tangible, that you could walk in and see it on the shelf. and, and take pride that we, we made it by hand. We did it the hard way. You know, we started with mash. We haul a thousand pounds of potatoes up a 10-foot ladder every day, <laughs> you know, five days a week. 
um, and really work to produce something that we're really proud of that we can walk in, see it behind the shelf too at a restaurant and order it at a restaurant. It's been the biggest thrill.